Hey there, welcome to another episode of Chit Chats. Thank you for subscribing, commenting, liking, and everything you've been doing following the Chip Coffee Co. YouTube channel and podcast so far. Um, heading into 2020, I promise we'll be starting to do some more educational videos again. And here it is, the first one of 2020. We're going to be talking about decaf. There's a good reason for it. Um, we've got a new decaf coffee launching at Chip Coffee Co. this week. I'm really excited about it, so I thought it would be a great opportunity to sort of talk about decaf and how we get from caf coffee to no caf coffee. Um, first of all, I really admire the decaf drinker. You know, all those out there saying that they hate decaf, what's the point of decaf, death before decaf, all that sort of stuff, you know, just get over yourselves. Um, because the decaf drinkers, they're the real coffee drinkers in the world. They're doing it for nothing more than that sweet coffee juice, whereas you and I were getting that coffee buzz. Um, but all that being said, decaf has had a bit of a bad rap over the years, mostly because the majority of decaf coffee tastes like shit. They usually used um, low-end commercial grade coffees and the cheapest decaffeination process to make that decaf and it's always roasted, quite dark. Um, that's because the, the decaffeination process of the coffee is actually, it makes it harder to roast it because the green coffee becomes quite brittle um, and it's hard to manage in a typical roast profile. So, moving on, how do we get decaf coffee? So, let's start with some basic facts about caffeine first. Um, caffeine is naturally occurring in coffee. It occurs in the fruits, the cherry of the coffee seed. Um, and it also acts as a natural insect repellent. Um, decaf coffees are always decaffeinated whilst they're in their green coffee form, so unroasted. And this is because the green coffee um, is at its most porous and caffeine is a water soluble compound. So there are four main types of decaffeination which fall into two categories. You've got solvent based and non solvent based. Um, starting with solvent based, you have two methods within that, which are direct solvent and indirect solvent. Direct being that the decaffeination agent used is directly applied to the green coffee, removing the caffeine. But before the solvent is actually acid added even, um, the coffee is first steamed to help the porosity of the beans and it also aids the hydrolysis of the caffeine. Um, the beans are then washed with the solving agent, solvent agent for up to 10 hours. Um, the solvent is then rinsed away and finished with a final steam to remove any solvent residue and also any other caffeine residue within there. This generally leaves the coffee at around 97% decaffeinated, which is quite common for solvent-based decaffeination methods. Um, indirect, on the other hand, is where the green coffee is first soaked in near boiling water to remove the soluble caffeine and then the water is moved to a different tank and the solvent is added to it. This is where the solvent bonds to the caffeine molecules after which the mixture is heated again so the solvent and the caffeine evaporate so you're just left with this sort of green coffee extract water mixture and then this water mixture is added back into the green coffee to give all those flavour compounds back into the green coffee. This last part is really important because just as caffeine is water soluble, so are a lot of the other flavour attributing compounds within green coffee. So we want to make sure we're keeping and saving as many of them as possible in the green coffee. Um, there are two main solvents used in decaffeination, which are methylene chloride, also known as MC, and uh, ethyl acetate, also known as EA, which is usually followed by the product or produce that the ethyl acetate comes from. Typically, it's sugar cane a lot of the time. Um, now, solvents like methylene chloride and ethyl acetate sound very scary things to be drinking in your coffee. And yeah, sure, if you drank just a pure cup of either of these, you would likely be very ill. Um, however, by the end of the decaffeination process, there's very little residue of the solvents left over and even if there is any left over by the time it's being roasted the roasting process will have vaporized and roasted off any minor traces of the solvents so 
decaf's perfectly safe to drink, don't worry about it. Um, now, ethyl acetate, I want to spend a little bit more time on, um, because EA is typically referred to as the sort of natural decaffeination method. Um, this is generally because ethyl acetate is an organically occurring compound, um, typically found in the fermentation of ripening fruits and even beer. And it can be produced from food and fermentation byproducts. Most commonly is, again, sugar cane. Um, in Colombia, particularly, most specialty grade coffees are decaffeinated using a natural ethyl acetate from sugarcane plantations. Um, moving on to the other side of all this, we have non solvent based. Um, the most common non solvent method is one you might have heard of before, which is Swiss water process. Um, the Swiss water process, really cool idea, pioneered in Switzerland um, in 1933 and made commercially available in 1980. Um, now what else is really interesting about Swiss water process is because there's only water and carbon involved in the whole decaffeination process, um, it's the only decaffeinating process that is also certified organic, which is quite cool if you're looking for organic decafs. Um, so the way Swiss water process works is quite complicated, but it's a very cool idea. Um, you essentially have four sets of vats holding the green coffee. Um, the first vat is washed with hot water to remove as much of the soluble caffeine as it can. Um, but as we've learnt during this process, we can also take out some of the flavour compounds within coffee. So we want to save as many of them. So what they do with this water is then put it into a carbon filtration system, which captures all the caffeine molecules, but lets everything else flow through. And it goes through about four of these different filtration vats before then heading back to one of the other green coffee vats. This all sounds very confusing. So. This now caffeine-free green coffee extract, or GCE as they term it, goes and decaffeinates another vat, which then flows into another vat, into another vat, into another vat, and it keeps on doing this process until we end up with completely caffeine-free coffee vats, which are full of the green coffee extract, full of flavours, and you end up with 99.9% .9 decaffeinated coffee, which is awesome. Um, I'm a big fan of Swiss water decaf, they're producing some amazing products, it's really good decaf. I probably butchered how they actually do it a bit, so I will link a couple of their videos below if you want to see it or hear it explained a little bit better. Um, moving on to the last method, which is the most common method, is CO2 decaffeination. So this uses liquid CO2 in insanely high atmospheric pressure to um, selectively remove the caffeine. So what happens is they start with a huge vat of green coffee that's been soaked in water again to help the porosity of the green beans and then it's sealed and loads of liquid CO2 is pumped through the green coffee at super high pressure and this removes only the caffeine. The CO2 is then put to a different vat and turned back into gas which gets rid of the caffeine and then the CO2 gases were used. So it's a good little cycle like that. However, all of this being said, um, this whole process of CO2 decaffeination is hugely, hugely expensive. So you often find it's only ever really big companies that do it and they use low grade commercial coffees to help keep the production costs down. So a lot of butt tasting decaf is low grade commercial grade quality coffees that have been CO2 decaffeinated and then probably badly roasted as well. So if you've ever had a bad coffee, it's probably CO2. Um, so after all that, I hope you've learned something from all this information. Um, I hope you've been informed how to buy better decaf. Um, and don't go for the super dark and oily stuff, because like we said, it's quite hard to roast decaf well. Um, and it's very easy for a coffee roast just to let that roast profile go and it turns super dark super quickly um, it takes a lot of control um, if you find co2 decaf it's probably a lower grade coffee so look out for swiss water process especially if you're looking for organic decaf 
and my personal favourite, the ethyl acetate or EA sugar cane. Best tasting decaf out there. I hope it's been good. I'll see you for the next one. Peace.